Hello Scorpio and welcome to my channel Tarot by Gabrielle. This is going to be a general reading for Sun, Moon, Rising and a Venus signs looking at your connection to the person that you are dealing with and needing to learn the most from right now. We're looking at all three sides of the connection. We've got your energy toward it, their energy toward it, and the energy in between it. The concept being that there are three sides to every story. So we're looking at your version of the truth, their version of the truth, and this higher level unbiased truth in the middle. This middle section is looking at what is the deeper purpose of the connection and the best way for you to move forward in order to align further with your higher self. As I do in all of my readings, I pulled the overall energy and clarified those messages as well as the overall theme for the reading, which we'll jump into in just a second, but I still have a different tarot deck I'll be pulling from for each side of the connection, as well as the advice deck I'll be using to close out the reading in the extended. Any information on the extended reading or on booking a personal reading with me is in the description box below. Last thing, please remember that these are general readings. They are not here to resonate fully for everyone and they won't resonate fully for everyone. So do please remember to take what does resonate and helps your personal situation and leave what does not. On that note, the whole reading can be reversed. If that is the case for you, that's totally fine and totally normal. Again, take what helps, leave what doesn't. All right, Scorpio, let's jump on in. On your side of this connection, you have interference with the Two of Swords in reverse. So the way that I read this message is that I feel like you have this goal of where you want to get to with this person. Um, but it feels as if something is always in the way. And I don't know what that is or what kind of what is interfering with the connection. But with the two of swords in reverse, I feel like you aren't really sure what to do. Because on one hand, I feel like you really see all of this could be. You see that potential. But then on the other hand, I feel like you're very frustrated with whatever this is. Um, so that's interesting. And we'll definitely see more when we dive into tarot. Now, this person has trapped with the Knight of Wands in reverse. So the way that I kind of see this is that this person is like stuck in self-sabotage in some way, shape, or form. I don't know exactly like what that is. You know, there's so many ways that people can self-sabotage and there's so many ways that that self-sabotage can affect um, relationships and romantic relationships in particular. Now, I'm not saying this has to be a romantic relationship, but... I do feel like that makes it really difficult for you because you see this potential of what could be, you know, what this connection um, could eventually turn into. But then, um, you know, it feels like this person is like constantly working against the goal that you have, even though they might have that same goal, um, which is kind of what self-sabotage is all about, right? You want better, you want to be better, you want to experience better, but yet... Um, for whatever reason, what you don't believe you're deserving or capable or lovable, so you kind of sabotage it before really giving it a chance. Now, in between this connection, you have dead end with the ten of wands. This to me is this reminder that how other people show up as is what they're capable of. You know, especially when we're talking about like the potential we see in another person, we have to remember that the potential we see in another person is what we would do if they were if we were in their shoes. Um, which is ultimately a reflection of us and not them at all. Uh, you know, if someone is, is constantly showing you their limit, like their capacity to love, and that isn't good enough for you, we have to learn to take people as they are, you know, to let people show us who they are and then make our decision based on that, not based on who we think they could be. Otherwise, we keep ourselves stuck in hoping for better, but yet experiencing um, less than what it is that we desire or ultimately deserve. Now, the overall theme of the reading, you have love yourself first. And it says your self-respect makes you more romantically attractive. So again, just this reminder that, you know, obviously it's important to love other people and it's absolutely important to have empathy for other people, especially, you know, people who are going through a lot or who struggle or who have a, a history or who have baggage or whatever the case might be. But we also have to remember that that same amount of love and empathy that we have for others has to be extended to ourselves. You know, we can see that other people are lovable, deserving and deserving of love. Um, regardless of the mistakes that they've made or the things that they've been through, but sometimes we forget to see that for ourselves. So we accept less than what we deserve in pursuit of trying to show someone else that they're lovable, um, which kind of leaves our needs and our desires and um, the love for ourselves really put on the back burner, which ultimately will end up, um, it's just not a sustainable dynamic. But 
let's go ahead and jump on in because I feel like there is probably more to this story. So Scorpio, let's see what's going on with your side of this connection. An interference with the Two of Swords in reverse. It's like you feel like something's always in the way. I don't know. It's like there's always a reason or there's always something going on. They're busy with work and then they're busy with family and then they have this drama going on in their life or, you know, and it just feels like there's always, there's always something. Scorpio side of the connection. There's always something in the way. King of Pentacles in reverse. Six of Swords in reverse. Strength in the world. On paper, because like with this King of Pentacles in reverse, I feel like it's like on paper, this person meets like maybe checks all your boxes or meets your expectations. Um, but then when it comes to the way that they make you feel, I feel like that's where there's a lot lacking. So for instance, you know, you might feel a certain way about them. You have feelings for them. Um, you know, you, you see that potential. They again, check like your boxes, but then they make you feel not good enough or alone, or you're always wondering where they stand. You know, you're always lacking clarity and you're, there's more like stress and chaos that ends up being that coming from this than like peace and clarity and love, which is also ultimately what, what you deserve here. But I feel like that's what makes it so hard for you to not know what to do is because you're like, on one hand, you know, you would think that this would be great. Like they have these things about them or they, you know, they check all my boxes, but then like when it comes down to it, I don't know if it's like emotionally or what it's, it's almost as like, if there wasn't this one thing, I don't know what that one thing is, but like, if there wasn't this one thing, then things would be great. If they weren't struggling with addiction or mental health issues or work problems or like whatever it is but it feels like there's always that one thing like no matter what there's always something and that has kept you stuck in a cycle with this person of like waiting for that one thing to be resolved but again there's always a that one thing so I feel like I mean I get why you would you would struggle with not really knowing what to do because again you're kind of torn between like the good that you see if things could get to a certain point or if this could just if this could just happen or if that could just go away or whatever it is. Um, then in the other, like I don't feel like you're getting what it is that you want or need here. Scorpio side of the connection. Now, something that I want to make very clear is that in any relationship, there always is going to be a healthy give and take. So there's always going to be, you know, no relationship is really 50-50. But there is a balance, meaning that like, although you're not showing up with 50% all the time and they're not showing up with 50% all the time, you know, sometimes, you know, they only have 20% to give. So you do have to show up with 80, but then the days where you feel like you have 20%, 15%, 10%, they're able to pick up the slack and show up with the, um, you know, the 75 to 80 to 90%, you know, difference. Um, it becomes unhealthy when you're always there for them or you're always supporting them or you're always taking care of them. But then when you need help, you don't feel that. You don't experience that. You are always kind of left in the dust. Um, so, you know, I've had people comment and say, well, this person's going through a certain period. Like it's important that I'm there for them and absolutely always be there for the people you love. But make sure that you are not always the only one who is there for others while not receiving that same level of support in return because you absolutely do, do deserve that. Okay, Scorpio side of this connection. Uh, that was just a side note, though. Scorpio side of the connection to the person they're dealing with. Seven of Swords. I couldn't figure out if that was upright or not. And then the Ace of Cups in reverse. Justice in reverse. reverse cards it's like the absence of what you need it's like there's more absence than there is presence it's 
kind of what I'm taking from that. There's more missing than there is what you need or what you desire. Um, I feel like there's a part of you that's like holding back what it is that you need. Um, or at the very least, it, uh, I feel like there's a part of you that maybe is second guessing whether or not what you're asking for is too much. Like, am I asking for, is, is, am I being too needy or, uh, you know, am I asking for too much? And the answer to that is absolutely not. You know, you're never asking for too much. You are never too much. Sometimes you could be asking the wrong person or you could be too much for the wrong person, but you are not asking for too much when you are being asked to be loved well. Okay, sure, there's a certain like, um, there's a line there, right? Like if you're asking for the other person to only give you attention and to never, you know, to not have any friends, like if you're asking for things that are unreasonable, then yeah, you might be asking for too much. But I feel like I'm speaking to a collective that's like, I just want to be loved well or I want to be reciprocated. Like I want to be able to experience the kind of love I have to give. I want to be exp- be able to um you know, make sure that my needs are being prioritized just as much as I prioritize others. And when that's the case, like if you are looking for what you give in your relationships, I can tell you with 100% certainty, you are not asking for too much. That is actually what you deserve. So in this connection with the justice in reverse, it feels like this has just been very unfair. Like things in this connection have been very unfair to you, but I feel like there's a part of you that's kind of been, um, kind of kept that to yourself almost, or, like haven't hasn't wanted to be um you haven't wanted to be totally honest about that because it, again it kind of feels like you're second guessing like is this too much am i asking for too much or am i expecting too much or whatever um the case is and i think that it's important for you to know that you're absolutely you're not um you know i just think that i don't know maybe you've been taught that having your needs met is asking for too much or that other people's needs and desires are more important than your own or it's selfish. Um, you know, and I think that that's a big one, you know, we've, especially as women in society where, you know, we're really taught that, um, the needs of our partner is more important than our own. And none of that is true, but it could very much be what you've been taught, you know, whether you're a male or female. Okay. Scorpio side of the connection, because if there's something always, and I feel like that's, it's hard because you want to have empathy, right? Especially if there's like, oh, this person is going through so much or, you know, this is happening or that's happening. You want to have empathy for what they're going through and that's really important, but make sure that it's not toxic empathy where all of a sudden you have all of this empathy for them, but you're, you know, you're hurting yourself in the process of loving someone else. Scorpio side of the connection to the person they are dealing with. The Ten of Swords with the Five of Pentacles. Oh, okay. You're hurting and have been hurting a lot in this connection, Scorpio. But I feel like it's almost like you, I don't know if you've talked yourself into believing that it's worth it. Like it's almost like you're like, no, it's worth it. It's worth it because I don't want to lose them or I don't want to lose the opportunity of being with this person or I don't want to lose what this could be. Um, and I feel like this reading, especially like with what's coming out on your side is the need for you to validate your own experience and understand that like what you're going through and and what, you know, you're experiencing in this connection, regardless of the empathy that you have for another person, like is not fair to you. And it's, it's okay for you to want more. It's okay for you to feel like you are deserving of more. Um, and I think that sometimes, you know, we look at what other people are going through and we say, oh, well, you know, they're going through so much or they're incapable of doing, you know, this for me because they're handling so much. But then, you know, when that dynamic starts to increase in the connection and all of a sudden you're like, well, now this connection is all about, you know, making sure the other person is okay, that their needs are being met, that they're getting what they want, that their dreams are being supported, that, you know, they're, um, they're happy. And, and it's almost like you forget that your happiness is, has to be a priority too. Now, sometimes I hear all the time, well, if my partner's happy, then I'm happy. And it's, it can be very dangerous when we 
um, equate our happiness to how happy we make other people because that is so not in our control, especially not sustainably. And so, yes, obviously you want to do what you can to make you know, the people that you love happy, but you also have to make sure that you, you, are, you are also believing that you are deserving of experiencing all of the things that you have to give. And if you're dealing with someone who's incapable of giving those things to you, you have to be honest with yourself and, and saying like, is this enough for me? Is this truly you know, all that I believe that I'm deserving of, of receiving? Or is this as good as I think it can get? Therefore, I'm holding on to what this could be because I think that this is the only way I'm ever going to be loved. Because that, that's when we start to kind of tell ourselves lies and hold on to people and things that aren't good for us because we think that we have to because if we don't, then we'll never experience love or we'll be alone forever or it's our only opportunity to be loved in the way that we desire. Um, and, and that absolutely isn't true. I, I truly believe that the universe, there's someone out there for everybody. And I believe that that person and you can't find each other until both people learn to love themselves well so that they can be in a connection where they both love themselves and love the other person well because we can only love other people to the extent that we love ourselves first. Um, otherwise, we will one of two things will happen. We'll either run from that love or we'll chase the love of ourselves through someone else. So we'll say, I need you to love me in order for me to love me. Or we'll say, I don't love me so you can't love me. And so we'll either keep people at a distance or we'll look for it and we'll look for love in people who don't know how to love us. Um, and so we have to, we have to focus on making sure that we're showing up for ourselves too in our relationships. It doesn't mean like your needs are all that matters, screw the other person, but it certainly does mean that it's also not their needs matter, screw yours. You know, it, it, it does have to be an equal give and take. And if you're not getting that, then something's got to give. All right. This person's energy towards Scorpio trapped with the Knight of Wands in reverse. This person's energy towards Scorpio. Ooh. Ooh. This person's hurting too. Ten of Swords. Oh, there's that's interesting. There's the King of Pentacles in reverse. And the Five of Pentacles. We saw all three of those cards on your side. So I Okay, let me see what this is talking about. So here's what's interesting. Is I do feel like this person has similar feelings for you. I do. I feel like they do care about you, do love you to the extent that they're capable of it. And that right there is the key. Because sure, they don't want to lose you. You know, I feel with the King of Pentacles in reverse, you kind of check their boxes too. But then with this Two of Pentacles in reverse, it feels like yet they don't prioritize it. They don't prioritize the connection. They don't give the connection the time and the energy and the care that is necessary in order to keep any kind of connection going. Now, with this Ten of Swords here, I feel like this person is also hurting. This could be something that doesn't necessarily have to do with you. To me, this is kind of like, like their trauma, their past pain, their baggage. And I feel like that always seems to get in the way. It's like they're, it's always, I don't know if it's their past or their fear of getting hurt or what but it, it just seems like it is consistently in the way of this connection and no matter how hard you try to help them with this ten of swords I feel like it's almost like you've taken like I feel like no matter how hard you try to help them with it it doesn't seem to improve the situation and you end up getting hurt in the process it's like you're trying to heal them for them but you can't heal, fix, or save anybody, right? You have to, you can support people and they're healing, uh, but that person has to be focusing on their own healing as well. And from what I see with the Knight of Wands in reverse, this person is more in kind of like self-sabotage mode. So they have their issues, they have these um, 
you know, this baggage, this trauma. And instead of doing something about it, they're using it as an excuse to push away love, which then ends up hurting you because I feel like you see that or like you can see right through that. And you're like, but I love you anyway. Like I see what this could be. I see what you could be like. And I feel like you see so much potential in them that that's where it comes back to like, you don't know what to do. But I do feel like this person cares about you. I just feel like they're not prioritizing the connection or you at all. It's like their priorities are all out of whack. This person's energy toward Scorpio. Okay, that Ten of Swords just came out again with the Hermit. Okay, I actually feel like what this is saying is that I need to... Okay, let me clarify the Ten of Swords. Because this, this Ten of Swords is important. They've become what hurt them. They've become what hurt them. There it is. Ace of Cups, Empress in Reverse. Okay, so the reason I saw that is like, it came out like this and it looked like it was like telling me almost that I needed to shine a light on this Ten of Swords to give like you a deeper understanding of what's going on here. And you know, I talk about this a lot. When people go through things that hurt them, we really have two options. When we go through when we go through painful experiences, we have two options. We can heal and grow from those experiences and we can transmute it into something positive. We can transmute it into healing. We can transmute it into evolution. We can transmute it into allowing ourselves to um, you know, break open in ways that we never would have before so we can let that light in and let that love in. Or we can allow the darkness to consume us and we can become what has hurt us. And we then become basically a product of our pain. And we can either become a product of our healing or a product of our pain. And it feels like this person, I do, I do feel like they've been through a lot. I'm not going to lie. I do. I feel like they've been through a lot. I feel like they've been hurt before. Maybe they've been betrayed. Maybe they've been, I don't know. But I feel like they have become what has hurt them. And that's the experience that they're trapped in. And I feel like it's what makes it hard for you is you have all this empathy for the things that they've been through that you want to be the one to like love them and support them and help them heal. But this person is not interested in healing. It's like they're, they're more focused on like survival or um, like getting through. Just it, it's a very selfish mentality. Now, selfishness typically comes from, you know, it's the hurt people, hurt people. This is literally what this is. Hurt people, hurt people. Selfishness usually comes from people, are, are usually people who are very um, deeply um, hurt. And I feel like that's what's hard, right? You have empathy for those people, but, you know, unconditional love and unconditional tolerance or unconditional love and unconditional empathy for another person does not equal unconditional tolerance. You can have empathy for another person's experiences, but also at the same time, separate yourself from their pain and understand that your pain is just as important because with this Ten of Swords, their Ten of Swords became your Ten of Swords. Their Ten of Swords became your Ten of Swords. The way that they've been hurt became the way that they hurt you or are hurting you. And that I feel like is where like mirroring kind of comes into play and you know all of that, all that other stuff. But I feel like, this isn't, this isn't about like, this is not about loving them. Okay. This, this connection is not the universe saying you need to love this person unconditionally, like to the extent that you hurt yourself. The universe is showing you through this connection that you have got to love yourself first. Love yourself first. You've got to make sure that you have just as much empathy for yourself, that you have just as much understanding for the things that you've been through. 
Although this person might not have been deserving of the ways that they've been hurt, you are not deserving of the ways that they are hurting you. This person's energy toward... That's interesting. Okay. This person's energy toward Scorpio. Ace of Cups in reverse this time. And then there's the Nine of Wands. You know, the Ace of Cups in reverse to me is like, um, um, goodness, repressed, repressed emotions. Like kind of pushing down pain, pushing down emotions, like not wanting to feel the uncomfortable stuff, not wanting to sit with the hard things. Um, and that's like typically the hurt people hurt people thing. It's when people, it, it, pe people who become what has hurt them are people who don't heal, who don't face the pain, face the experience. You know, you see this a lot in relationships with people who, um, you know, they'll get out of a relationship with someone and they'll jump right into a relationship with someone else. They don't take the time to heal or to um, address kind of like that pain. So they carry it into the next connection and then they create more baggage and they carry it into the next connection and they create more. And then it's just like this, this um, vicious kind of cycle here. And so I feel like, you know, that might resonate on both sides, but it's very important that you understand that how this person is acting, how they're behaving, the things that they're doing, the things that they're not doing, the things they're saying and not saying, it's not a product of your value or your worth. It's not a product of what you're deserving of, and it's certainly not a reflection of what's possible for you in love. It is merely an indication of where they are at on their journey and what their capacity to love looks like at this point. And what you're needing to be honest with yourself about is saying, is this person's, does this person's capacity to love match what I deserve? And if your answer is no, you can ask yourself, okay, what can I do to change that? What's within my control? Well, I can set a boundary. I can ask for my needs to be met. I can ask for change. Now, you also have to remember that asking for that isn't about trying to change someone else. It's not saying, I need you to change in order for me to know that I'm lovable, in order for me to know that I'm deserving. It's you saying, I know what I'm worth and I have to protect that. I have to protect that. I know you're hurting. I know you've been through a lot. I know that you're struggling, but I cannot anymore save, fix, and heal you if you're not willing to do those things for yourself. Well, I, I can help you. I can support you, but you're not willing to do these things for yourself. You're stuck in this self-sabotage. So I have to protect my energy. I have to protect my peace to make sure that I don't get further hurt in this. Um, which obviously isn't easy. But there is, there are options, there are answers. I feel like there's more within your control than you think there is. In between this connection, you have dead end with the 10 of wands. I'm gonna hop on over to the extended. We're gonna look at the deeper truth of the connection and the best way for you to move forward in order to align further with your higher self. Thank you so much, Scorpio, as always, for your support of my channel. I do hope that this reading helped and resonated with you in a way that you were needing today. And as always, I wish you nothing but love and healing on your journey moving forward. All right, bye, Scorpio.